What I'm realizing is that God sees eternity in perspective. God sees my whole life in perspective. My name is Janine Turner, and I am second.
is ticking by And I can feel an explosion inside And time, time is ticking by And I can feel an explosion inside As in the days of Noah As in the days of Noah They'll be drinking, marrying, laughing As in the days of Noah What a fool they say To build a boat on sand What a fool they say It's never rained before It's never rained before It's never rained before As in the days of Noah So it will be In the coming of the sun of man And what a fool they say To fast and pray And what a fool they say Come on, it's been 2,000 years Do you really think that is coming? Come on, let's just get real But remember this first That many, many, many scoffers will come And when the rain starts falling It's too late It's too late And when the rain starts falling It's too late It's too late As in the days of Noah It's never rained before It's never rained before It's never rained before It's never rained before But one day, two days, three days gone by And time, time is ticking by And I can feel an explosion inside People get ready Jesus is coming And many, 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 many scoffers will rise in that day And they'll say, it's never rained before It's never rained before It's never rained before It's never rained before It's never rained, rained, go away Hide it from the rest of the land Cause when the rain starts falling It's too late It's too late
Oh, no, 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 no. Jesus said, I, can, I have come up to cast fire upon the earth, but would I that it be kindled? And those tongues were over you and me and the people here. I'm privileged to have as my buddy, as you know, your pastor, Pastor Jose. I think when God created us, he joined us at the hip, but he just didn't remember to tell us until late in life. So, two announcements I want to I want to share with you a mighty work that God's been doing in this church and it's, uh, it's a miracle. From this church and some, from our church have put in over 10 weeks of work to find something that the world has lost, and that is God in work. They have been studying the word to find out how to live and find purpose in God's work, whatever work. It, it, what we ended up calling it is a calling, that God has called each of us to work, and there is no bad work, dirty work, clean work, whatever. There's no paid work, unwork, you know. It's work is, if God started, and it says what? In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. And then he went to work. And it didn't stop. So... My first announcement is the guys are getting close to our retreat where we're going to go away and come up with a plan for the next project. We were very blessed to be able to get a grant to put this together because the church needs to hear this. The church, I don't mean just the world. We've forgotten it, you know. We kind of look at work, oh, it's the punishment of the fall. Oh, really? Is that what God thinks? Has he gone on vacation? So, this coming Saturday, right here, our work group is getting together from two until, Joanna? Yeah, but the first, two until five. They're going to work on both the retreat that's going to be in, the, in October and help plan. 
But then we're inviting all of you and them and their families. I just need a number of how many. We're going to have a hot dogs, hamburgers, and whatever God provides. Come ready to eat. Hmm? At, at, is that at 6 or 5? 5, 5.30 this time. Yeah, 5.30. And then, just because it is one holy communion, as Pastor Jose has been telling you, this church is one holy communion in Christ. We are the body of Christ. We're going to close that. We hope you bring your children. They need to see what daddy is learning about work. They need to see what mommy is learning about. We need to train more people in this congregation and in this city how to be alive with work. So we'll, pray, we'll close with praise and worship and Holy Communion. And several of the people who participated, do we, you don't have to worry, you don't have to listen to me preach. Well, you know, several of the people from here who participated in the program are going to be interviewed for testimonies, for you to hear what they have done for you and what they have gotten for you and for the Church of Christ, the body of Christ. Okay? So it's next Saturday. They'll be working until 5, then working to set up, and you're welcome to come help set up. But, and at 5.30 we eat, and then we move in here for awesome Praise and worship and testimony. When you hear these testimonies, pretty awesome, huh? Would you say? Yeah. Wouldn't you say? Some of these guys are here. So bring your families. Bring your kids, your grandkids. Bring people you don't even know. Just let Lisa, can I have them let you know? And then Lisa will let, and, and Raymond. We just need a count. I, you know, I, I, I'm... I've, I, I've watched Jesus multiply, but I, I haven't quite got mastered that yet. But he always supplies. That I have mastered. He always. The second announcement. God, I can't get up here without preaching, can I? It's really, this is my low-key self, so you're lucky. This is, this is awesome. They'll tell you. Yeah. The other thing I want Raymond to come up and help me with. You've heard, I am sure by now, that every Saturday morning until the Lord God reveals otherwise, he has told me that we are to have this prayer walk climb and not to stop doing it. And God knows with the heat we've had it, no matter what I think until he makes it evident. If it's at 7.30 in the morning at Exploration Peak Park, that's, what is that? Buffalo and uh, Blue Diamond, thank you. We, we can put it on a website, we can do all that stuff. I'm totally unprepared. It's awesome. Raymond will tell you more about it and he also has some handouts from it. Raymond? Good morning, everyone. Um, yesterday morning was my second time to take the prayer walk. Um, and it's unbelievable. Uh, the first week it was uh, all smoggy because of the smoke and stuff, so you couldn't really see the valley. But uh, there's a mountain that we climb. And as we climb this mountain, we, we do a Bible study. And we are given scriptures to read and to talk about and share what, we, what we're getting out of, of the scriptures that we're reading as we're climbing this mountain. But um, at the top of this mountain, um, there's a giant star up there and a platform, and, um, and there's three um, scripture, or not scriptures, but uh, information plat plat platters that talk about the valley and how Las Vegas was created, how the railroad came through Vegas, and, and how the, uh, the trails that came from the east to the west and stuff, just, you know, 
information of, 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 of the valley and stuff. But um, as, we're, as we're reading these Bible studies and, and, and studying the scripture and the word of God, the Holy Spirit just moves in mysterious ways. And yesterday morning, we had a sister, Sister Angela here. She's new here today. Um, she come walking up the trail, just singing, had her earphones on, walking her dog. And she had already climbed the mountain. But uh, something led her to our Bible study. And she came and, and we welcomed her and we introduced ourselves and, you know, come to find out where she was a sister of the Lord. And she really didn't have a home uh, where to, you know, call home as far as fellowship and stuff. But uh, it's like we knew each other all our lives. I mean, she was on the same platform as we were, as we were studying the word. And it was just a blessing. It was a blessing to meet her and a blessing to share what we were doing in the valley, uh, to pray for the valley. But uh, it's really interested, and I have some extra Bible study sheets here. If anyone wants one, I can hand them out. And um, y'all need to come check it out. Yeah, you can even share rides. Pastor Jose is generally there, often Pastor Sean and so on. Uh, I want, can I put you on the spot before we go? Can you, in a couple sentences, tell what you experienced yesterday? It's an ice cream cone. You told it like this. Okay. Um, I just thank God because it was such a blessing. Um, as I've been, um, I started last Sunday. Um, going up the mountain early in the morning, and I was just led to go start last Sunday because I've been wanting to go, but I hadn't been since I moved to here, um, to this area. I just moved to the Vegas area from Texas um, in February. And so I started up the mountain um, last Sunday, and it was a blessing up there, and I had been um, praying for people. I go up there and pray for my family, friends, and different prayer requests that I have, and I pray for Las Vegas and different issues within that I feel, you know, um, led to pray for. And so I had been going up there and praying and everything and just praising God. Um, then... Um, so each time God gives me somebody, I just ask, hey, would you like prayer after I pray? Because some people are kind of listening to me because I just pray out loud. And um, they say, oh, it's so beautiful. And I just ask people if they want prayer, and they've been open to it. And so um, this Saturday I went up there, and um, I walked a different way. Usually I go up the mountain and then down and then back up and down. And so this time I went up and then down and then all the way around. And as I come in, came in, I seen um, the prayer group, you know, and um, it was a blessing. It was just like um, meeting people that I knew that they were waiting on me. And um, it was such a blessing. Um, when we were praying, um, I was just giving testimony of different various things that I've gone through and everything. And it was just a lot of confirmation that they had already been talking about. Um, then we prayed, and then um, there was just, um, um, after, during the, after the prayer, um, I hugged everybody, and I hugged um, Pastor, and he just um, spoke into my life, and it was such a blessing because it was like a, a release of a father's blessing to his daughter, you know, and um, that's how I felt. It was just such a, a presence, and, and I had shared with them that my father was an alcoholic, and I never received that you know and so just really kind of just touched me in a way and then we just led more into um, prayer um, pastor prayed for me and and gave me what God told him to give me and it just went to a, a deliverance type you know it was so deep this moment that I don't know what all it was about because God hasn't revealed it but I, I know that there was a release a great release and um, I just thank God for meeting um, God's people um, in the service of the Lord. So, I, I want to tell you one more piece of this, just one more. That is, I'm, I'm trying to learn to really submit to the Lord. I mean, really submit 
And if, even if there's a twinge of doubt, whether it's my ego saying, that's kind of embarrassing, or what will people think, I do it. So I was told and did get down on my knees in front of her and kiss her sh feet, her shoes. And there was a break, absolutely. It took, it changed me, definitely. And I can honestly say, she said to me, she left our house in prayer last night. She said, see you soon, Pops. There's a blessing. Amen. Brother Fritz. Brother Fritz is going to take up the offering this morning. So um, I, I've been at my job for about 17 years, and it's been a long time. And so, um, you know, when you've been someplace for so long, you see so much things changing. You know, the property has changed. Um, people have changed. People have come and gone. Um, even promotions, I've seen people promote. And for a long period of time, I've told myself I've, I, I'm settled right where I'm at. I'm, I'm okay. I don't need to go any higher. I'll train you guys, I'm telling the uh, officers, I'll train you guys whatever you guys want to do to move up above me. I don't care. But deep down inside, there was something that wasn't moving. Like, if I'm not growing, right, this, it's not good either, right? So um, I took a position to to break some of that monotony inside my work. I went outside to be a part of an outside adventure, uh, which is still going on at my property, and I taught some guys there. But after two months of being out there, God brought me back in. It's funny how he did it. And you know, when I came back in, I was very thankful. For one thing, the heat was coming back. <laughs> Summertime was coming back, so I was able to move back in. But I noticed that I started to feel a lot different I started to feel a little bit more vigor, a little more excitement. My training started to become a little bit more keen, and I started getting more excited. So I actually mentioned it to my uh, manager. I said, man, this time around, it felt like I had a two-month two vacation outside. But this time around, I'm excited, man. I'm going to do something. Um, you know, in times past, I put in for promotions just to put in for it because if you don't, you looked at as hey, aren't you trying to get ahead? Or So it was a negative thing if you don't put in for promotions. Um, all of a sudden, a promotion was uh, um, in the queue again as an assistant manager. And I, you know, I, I figured I'd put in for it. Um, but all along, I was excited already. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to get it, but even so, I'm excited about what God is doing because I want to lead my guys and girls and help them to do a great job. Well, I got two prophecies that came in, and it was a blessing to me because the prophecies kind of spoke God's word over promotion. And with that, it became a confirmation in my heart that this thing might happen. You know, when I say might I don't know, you know, still in God's hand. Whether or not it does happen or not, it doesn't, you know, it wasn't a big deal to me. But yet God knew inside of me that he wanted to do something for me and for the people that I work for. Um, I'm really big into helping the uh, officers promote too as well. So anyways, um, I got excited and I put in for it. And today I just wanted to stand before and tell you guys that I got a promotion. Praise God. Yeah, God put in so, praise God, I am an assistant manager over at my place, and I praise God for that. Um, when I did get it, the guy who called and gave me the, um, the message, he says it was long overdue. So, I praise God for that. Oh, let me pray for the offering. Oh, you take it off. <laughs> okay. Father, bless your people, God. You know what they need. You know what their desires are, Lord, and cause them to know, Lord God, that you have it in the queue for them. Not to give up, but to trust in you that no matter what's going on and how long it's been, 
You are faithful, God. So bless as they give to you, God, their offerings. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, praise the Lord. Welcome to my Father's house. Hallelujah. Welcome, Internet, Internet congregation. We're blessing our, our pastors are uh, taking a break this Sunday, so I get the opportunity to get up and minister. Praise God. God bless pastors Jose and Tony Boveda, and we're going to be, uh, we're gonna be uh, really blessed this morning. I got a word for you from God. I got a prophetic word for my father's house, and I got a word for the body of Christ, and I'm excited about it, and I'm going to really try to jam through really quick, believe it or not. So are you going to be with me on this? Amen. Here we go. Hallelujah. What was the first song this morning? Who was that talking to? You. So people, get ready. Can you say I'm ready? You don't sound ready. Are you ready? Because God is doing something. God is doing something new. God's doing something in this house. Praise God. Are we the body of Christ? We're going to demonstrate that today. We're going to demonstrate how we are the body of Christ. And we might just jump to it really quick. Are you ready for something really quick? I hope so, because it's going to be coming. It's going to be coming on strong, and it's going to be good. So praise God. I want you to go ahead and look at 2 Corinthians. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lord, we worship you. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 through 10. Hallelujah. What are we again? We are the? We're the body of Christ. There's something really unique you may not know about the body of Christ, which you are. Hallelujah. That really we don't pay attention to this part about who we are. Praise God. Say, who we are. are. Who I am. In Christ. Praise God. Who are we again? The body. Praise God. I don't know. Are you part of the body? Yes. Hallelujah. So this is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 through 10. Hallelujah. So the apostle is saying this. Say, I'm a bone. The apostle didn't say that. You're saying it. <laughs> I'm a bone. I'm a bone in the body of Christ. Did you know that one bone was broken in the body of Christ? Did you know that? Not one bone was broken in his body. And you are the body of Christ. Members one of another. I want you to stand up. Praise God. Oh, yeah, this is interactive. This is my father's house. you got to go ahead and put your bone linked to another bone. In other words, you need to join it. Look at that. Some people caught what I'm talking about. Grab somebody else's hand. Every hand should be joined in this place. We're going to declare something. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to declare that we are bone of his bone. Say, I am bone of his bone. I am flesh of his flesh. And not one bone is broken in the body of Christ. There will be no division in the body. The enemy will be able to break through. Because not one bone is broken in the body body of Christ. Hallelujah. You're going to hold that stance? Hold that stance. Can you hold that stance? Sometimes you got to hold on as the body of Christ. We are troubled on every side. Been there? But not distressed. We are perplexed. Been there? But not in despair. Oh, what's going to happen to me? We are not there because not one bone 
is broken in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Persecuted but not forsaken. Has he given up? No. You can't either because you're part of his bones. Hallelujah. Cast down, but we are not destroyed because we are the bones and not one bone was broken. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel like the Lord is saying something to us. As a part of my Father's house, I'm not even going to look at my notes right now. I believe the prophetic word of the Lord is this. That, hallelujah. See, God set a limit. I'll let you release hands, but you have to stay close. God set a limit to the devil. And God has set a limit. You can release hands if you want. To the, to the body of Christ. And he said this, not a bone shall be broken. Jesus is the Passover lamb, correct? Did you know that not a bone was to be broken of the Passover lamb? He was protecting us all along. Like a husband is supposed to protect his wife and lay down his life for her. Husbands, you know what I mean. We'll lay down our life for that woman. He was protecting us all along. God the Father all along was protecting the body of Christ. His son's body was broken. And he's our example. And we're to die to our flesh. But not a bone was broken. Hallelujah. No division in the body of Christ. No more, I just feel like the Lord has said, I set a limit to not one being broken, and I've set a limit in this house. I believe God is saying he set a limit in this house. And there's been things that have come up. But the Lord has said, as he spoke to the waves and said, thus far shall your proud waves go, and then they'll stop right here. God has set a limit. God has set a stop sign saying, no more. Because not one bone was broken in the body of Christ. The devil could not go beyond that limit. And I believe that's a prophetic word to my father's house. Hallelujah. Gossip? No! In the name of Jesus. Thus far! And now you have to stop. Because a limit has been set. So do you support the fact of the brother? Hold hands one more time. I'll, then I'll give you a break. Hallelujah. Do you support the body of Christ? Because that's your calling. Young people, pretend you're all young people right now. Hallelujah. Getting two degrees and the low-paying job because you're looking for your... You're missing your calling. You're looking for your career. But you have a calling to be like Jesus. And that calling will bring you into your connection that God has for you. Praise God. So young people, don't seek the cushy job. I'm going to get a job with the government. So I'll have a retirement. You don't know if there'll be a retirement coming. But you do know you are called. And there's your connection to be a part of the body of Christ and find your place in the body and connect. You are not alone. Praise God. Okay, you can let go of your hands. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Let me give you the background on it. John 19, verse 33 through 37. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they did not break his legs. These are the Romans, right? They had the authority to break his legs, but they did not break his legs. Why? They broke the legs of the thief on the right, and they broke the legs of the thief on the left. But they did not break his legs. Why? I'm asking, why didn't they break his legs? Say it again loud, somebody. He was already dead, but more than that. It was a prophecy. 
that not one bone will be broken of the Passover lamb. See, we may be cast down, but we are not destroyed because God said so way in advance. He was talking about us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. One of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and there came out blood and water. And he bore record and his record is true. And he that know, he knoweth that he says is true that you might believe that these things were done so the scripture could be fulfilled. Say fulfilled. You're going to fulfill your calling because Jesus paid the price. Hallelujah. So you can fulfill your calling. Say my calling. God has a calling on everybody in this room. Hallelujah. The calling that you have is to receive his calling. It's not, it's not difficult. It's simple because the gospel is simple. So those of you who are struggling, where is my place in this world? What does God have for me next? What about my old age? What about my middle age? What about what about? You can grab a hold of the calling of God right now. Praise God, because His calling is your calling. Say, His calling is my calling. God has a fulfillment for you. Praise God. And if you wonder, how do I get it? Well, just hook up to the body of Christ, because your calling will not be disappointed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. These things were done that the Scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of Him shall not be broken. They will look upon him whom they have pierced. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I'm just giving you the scripture on this. In Exodus 12, 46. In one house it shall be eaten. This is the Passover lamb. You shall not carry forth any of the flesh you brought out of the house. Neither shall you break a bone. In Ephesians 5, 29 through 30. We're talking about um, a man and his wife. And we're talking about the Lord and his church. No man ever yet hated his own flesh. If you hate yourself and your own flesh, you're not being a man. That's not from God. That stuff of hurting yourself, that is not God. Hallelujah. So no man or, ever, or woman ever hated their own flesh. And if you do, you better know something. You're not listening to God or his word. Hallelujah. But they cherish it even as the Lord, the church, before we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones. And he keeps, Psalm 34, 20, he keeps all his bones. Has the Lord kept you? I want you to look at your brother and sister, because that's another part of the body of Christ. Look at your mom then. Hallelujah. That would be your <laughs> mom. Look at somebody next to you. This is interactive, okay? I was a youth pastor for a lot of years. So I'm expecting some interaction, okay? Praise God. Look at the person next to you. We'll try that one more time until I see more cooperation. Praise God. Look at the person next to you. That, that's the body of Christ. That's your connection. Praise God. Some of you have gotten real connected. I'm looking at John and Des. You got real connected. But praise God. There's a connection for you, young lady. I'm not apologizing. Tell her, Chase, stand up, please. I don't know what that's for, but there is a connection for you, young lady. I don't even know why you're laughing. There is a connection for you, young lady. God has it. He's always had it. Praise God. And you keep that smile because God is for you. Keep it, Tyler, in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Because God has your connection. Praise God. Simple word, right? Hallelujah. Praise God. God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many people got their connection in this room? If you're a married couple, stand up, please. You got your connection. <laughs> Glory to God. See, young people need to see this. Children need to see this. You got your connection, didn't you? Did you get it? Oh, my gosh. Did you get it? All right. Fritz got it at least. Hallelujah. Are you happy with your connection? Yes. 
you got a blessed connection. <laughs> okay, you can sit down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, the Bible says that he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord. I love seeing you talk about her when you met her. That was so guyish. That was such a guy thing to do. You know, the, the co-workers at the fast food. What a glorious place to be, right? The fast food restaurant. I was there, I was there three and a half years. Um, help the, you help everybody. Oh, get out of the way. I've got this one. When he saw her walk into the restaurant. I said, that is such a guy thing right there. I loved it. I loved it. Because that was your connection. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, I'm going to go ahead and jump to the next part here. And um, thank you, Lord, for your leading in Jesus' name. This is, um, this is something I wanted to share with you about the call of Christ. Remember I said that his call is your call. Amen? Praise God. So I, I did something I thought was kind of neat. And... Um, Basically, in God's Word, it talks about a double portion. How many people, <laughs> how people, how, how many people just want a single portion? That's all you want. Just, to sing, just take care of yourself and that's it. Good. How many want a double portion? God gives them. God gives a double portion. If you're married, you got a double portion. Hallelujah. There's times when God is ministering to me and times when it's just he's not ministering to me and he'll minister to her to minister to me. And I didn't, I didn't have it. I didn't have the answer. And God gives it to her. And there's my double portion. Praise God and vice versa. Amen? Amen. So God is a God of the double portion. Well, you're going to find out that God is a... God gives the double. Everybody say double. Hallelujah. We want... The double portion because God gives it. So what am I getting to? You're going to find this in the call of Christ in the Gospels. And what I did was I took it out of all four Gospels because God repeated himself twice and twice. There's four Gospels. It's in all four Gospels. It's, when God repeats himself, he really wants you to get a hold of this. Well, he did it four times, and I did a little harmony of it. And you may not see it up here, but let me just read it to you. I'll, be, I'll give you the, the introduction verse about this. First of all, this is part of the call of Christ. He not come to minister, be ministered unto, this is Mark 10, 45, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Praise God. That was part of his call. Amen? And um, this is the harmony of four times what Jesus said about life. Here we go. You ready? Here we go. It's not difficult, but this is the call. It's not going to be up here. He that finds, saves, or loves his life shall lose it. Here's the call. He that loses, hates his life for my sake and the gospels in this world shall find it. Tyler Chase, this is how you find it. Praise God. I don't know why I'm centering you, but thank you for having a good attitude. Hallelujah. <laughs> what do they know that I don't know? Praise God. Hallelujah. Something's going on back there. Shall find it, save it, keep it unto life eternal. Say life eternal. Jesus is the king. Praise God. He has a kingdom. Hallelujah. We're members of his body, and we are members of his, he is our king. Jesus is looking at the kingdom. Praise God. We set our eyes on the world. You know the world is a kingdom? The kingdoms of this world, they will become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, but they need to come to the Lord, don't they? Amen. Amen. But the world is a kingdom, and if you grab a hold of that kingdom, you're grabbing a hold of a kingdom that is passing away. If you grab a hold of the kingdom of God, you're grabbing hold of the future. You're grabbing hold of the vision. Praise God. You can't have the vision 
and keep your eyes on the past. You can't have a vision and have it based on your memory only. See, God is doing something new. That's why the Lord set a limit to the enemy and said, not a bone will be broken. That's why God has set a limit in this house and said, thus far will those proud waves come against you. A limit has been set by God. Hallelujah. Isn't it good how God sets a limit? He says to the enemy, no, you'll stop at this point. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. What shall a man profit if he gain the whole world? He gained this entire kingdom that's out there. Oh my gosh. I can't help it. Young lady, I don't know you at all. You just came today. Your mom and your dad's here, okay? There's a whole kingdom out there. But God has your future for eternity. This is a kingdom that will pass. How old are you? Okay, you're a young woman. And this kingdom wants your attention. This kingdom will not fade away. It is for eternity. It is eternal. You're here out of obedience. I don't know if you're obeying your mom and your dad or what, but you're 27, so I think you're beyond that. I believe you're obeying the Lord. Because God has a purpose for your life. The call means your vocation, your career. Your call is the purpose of God. So God's purpose is waiting for you. Praise God. And I believe you're walking into it because you came to God's house today. But I wanted to speak that over you, okay? Because there's this is going to go. But God has something for you. Praise God. So God wants you to connect because he's got it for you. Hallelujah. Praise God. What is your name? Kristen. Oh, you're in trouble with that name. That's a Christian name. Christ. Is that Jesus' last name? That's a title. It means the anointed one. Praise God. So somebody put the anointing kabang on you. Praise God, you know. They put the thing that this is God's anointed. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. Praise God. Hallelujah. You keep praying for us, for our praise and worship team, all right? Something was in your heart towards us, keep praying for us because we want to step. I can't hold these guys back. You know, these guys in the praise and worship team, they're just, they're just going to take off with a new song and do it. So you just keep, I don't want to hold them back, but you keep praying for us like that, okay? Praise God. Tony, right? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness, this is kind of interesting, huh? Hallelujah. Sometimes you just step out and you just got to go. Anyway, praise the name of the Lord. Not a bone was broken. The kingdom. Hallelujah. Done all that. Hallelujah. We're going to talk a little bit about the kingdom, and I think we're going to go ahead and just believe God at that point. This is about obedience. In 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5 and 6, I'm just throwing scriptures at you. I hope you're ready. Praise God. The Word of God talks about obedience and the purpose of it. Hallelujah. Did you know the purpose of obedience is revenge? Did you know the purpose of obedience is punishment, but not on you? The purpose of our obedience, us being obedient to the call of God, is so God can take revenge. See, Jesus fulfilled all the obedience. And then, hallelujah, hallelujah. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's revenge. Praise God. That's the purpose of the obedience. That's why he was obedient. Praise God. So, in 2 Corinthians verse 5 and 6, 10, 5 and 6, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. How am I going to get a hold of the kingdom of God? How am I going to get a hold of the plan of God for my life? 
I have to be obedient. To what point? To this point. Praise God. And God is talking to everybody. Hallelujah. Cast down everything that is exalting itself against God. You've got to cast it down. You've got to not let it stay on your mind, not let it stay in your thoughts, not let it get into your heart. You've got to root it up. You've got to cast it down. That is 2 Corinthians 10, verses 5 and 6. Against the knowledge of God and bringing in captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Is it worth it? Who said yes? Praise God. It's worth it. To take captive every thought. Well, that's pretty heavy-duty obedience, right? That's not just what I'm doing, not just my actions. That's what I'm thinking. If it's contrary to God, I'm saying to it, you got to go. You don't get to play your, your movie in my brain. You don't get to uh, mess with the, my emotions. I'm not going to dwell on you. I'm going to be obedient. And that's pretty heavy-duty obedience, but that's what it takes to grab a hold of God's kingdom. Praise God. Where is the kingdom of God? It's within us. Remember that we sing this song every now and then, Pastor Jose ministers this, Lord, be king of the kingdoms of my heart. Jesus, be the king of the kingdoms of my heart. Where we say, everything's going to be subject to you, Jesus, in my heart. Praise God. How many? Things? Everything. How far? Oh, you sound so unmilitary. That's okay. I just laugh because when Pastor Jose is ex-Marine and he goes, how far? All the way. I just love it when that happens. Anyway, praise God. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. There is a purpose for obedience. Praise God. There is an anointing that is there for us if we will go ahead and value it enough to go for it. If God says he has a purpose for your life, a vocation and a calling, it's worth it to go for it. But it will cost you something. Hallelujah. Revenge. To vindicate, retaliate, or punish. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is Colossians 4.17. And I say to Archippus, who's he? Do you all know who he is? Good, I don't either. Put your name in there. I'll put your name in there. You put mine. And I say to James, say it to me. I say to Tony. Say to Tony. You can call me Pastor Tony if you want. If it makes you feel better. But it's still saying it to that person, right? You know, I want you to have you help me. Stand up and do this. Right from there. Hallelujah. This is a strong, right there, you can do it right there. This is not a weak man, this is a strong man. Praise God. Okay, we're giving glory to the Lord, I know. I say to James. I say to Pastor Tony. Hallelujah. Take heed to the ministry. Take heed to the ministry. Which you have received in the Lord. Which you have received in the Lord. That you fulfill it. That you fulfill it. Praise God. God is saying that to us. Thank you. Take heed. John Parks. <laughs> Stand up. <laughs> Take heed. Go ahead. You can give it back to me. Take heed. To the ministry, to the ministry. you have received in the Lord. You received. That you fulfill it. Praise God. You've had You've allowed me to speak into your life, right? So you can speak into mine, put me in check too. Because I'll be doing that to you. Take heed, fulfill it. Because God has got something for us. The purpose of the obedience of Christ was revenge. And it wasn't on people, it was against the enemy. Once again, for this purpose was he manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Say, we won't have to be here much longer. <laughs> Praise God. Because God has a work for us to do. 
God has set a limit in this body, you guys. God has set a limit of protection on us. God has a purpose for this body. God has a purpose for my father's house in Las Vegas, Nevada. God has a mission for you. Praise God. And, and the mission is important. And God has said the limit has been set because the mission will be fulfilled. Praise God. The mission will be fulfilled. It will be fulfilled. The mission will be fulfilled. Is it Tess? Praise God. Some people stood on point in this house for eight hours yesterday praying because the mission will be fulfilled. All it takes is somebody to care about it. Say, all it takes is someone who cares because God is not abandoning you. All he needs is somebody to care. Praise God. Remember the scripture that was brought up within the last month? It talks about somebody who would care for the welfare of the children of Israel. And it grieved the enemy. It grieved Sanballat and some other character that was with him, his sidekick. It grieved them that there was somebody who cared for the welfare of the children of Israel. You need to grieve the devil. You need to give him grief. And all you got to do is care about the work of the Lord. All you got to do is care about the ministry of Jesus. All you do got to do really is care about the person next to you. Jamar, the Lord cares about you. I want you to stand up. God has a calling on your life. Hallelujah. You are a precious young man. And the Lord says, don't look at your brother. Don't even look at your family. Oh, does God talk like that? He does. I can show it to you in his word. If you love father and mother more than me, you're not worthy of me. We brainwash our kids sometimes. We, they need to love Jesus. Then they'll love you more. Praise God. He has a plan just for you. And you don't need to rate yourself or compare yourself praise God because God has a ministry for you to fulfill at this age as a young man so quit going well I'm doing this I'm comparing myself don't God has something just for you I don't even know what it is I can guess at it only but you stay a part of the things of God and God's going to bring it forth praise God you are a precious young man you have a precious soft heart towards the Lord keep it keep it hallelujah praise God you too, keep it. Keep what you got, okay? Praise God. You're raising godly kids. I think your daughter's a doll, by the way. <laughs> Praise God. She's precious. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the name of the Lord. Are we ready? Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord, we just worship you right now, Father God. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that you're in charge here, Father God. Hallelujah. We worship your name, Lord. We give praise to you right now in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does anybody, I'm, I, I have got to fulfill my ministry. <laughs> I've got to fulfill what God has called me to do. So does anybody have anything going on with them right now physically where you are in pain? Praise God. And you're going to be bold enough to actually, good, good. Come on up, Tony. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. See, you yelled at me that I fulfill the ministry that God has for me. Praise God. Um, what's happening? A lot? Okay. What's one thing we can believe God for right now? Like muscle tension? Muscle tension? Like that. Okay, praise God. Um, <laughs> Want to come help me pray? Hallelujah. So where is it going on? Um, I mean, I'm at Peter's office Okay. So we're going to lay hands on her, okay? Right? We're going to pray, right? 
Hallelujah. We're going to believe God because God cares about her and we're the body of Christ, right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for your anointing, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we thank you over this part of your bone, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And like marrow ministers health to the bone, we minister in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we speak to the bones and say, Hey, bones, hey, body, you're blessed. Just relax, Tony. You're blessed in Jesus' name. Hey, bones, hey, bones, you're blessed. Glory to God. Hey, body, muscles, shape yourself to the Word of God. And the Word of God says, by whose stripes you are healed. And if you are healed, then you were healed. Glory to God. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. Glory to God in Jesus' name. Praise the name of the Lord. Mm, thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We thank you for your anointing, Lord God, that breaks every yoke and sets the captive free. We thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Praise God. So, we always do this. So, I, I'm stepping out of faith too. So, do you feel any different at all? Is there any change at all? Maybe a little bit in my shoulders and stuff. Okay. The neck has not. Not the neck? Okay. Out of one to ten, how much of a change? One and a half. One and a half. Okay. <laughs> so, we're going to go for it again. Amen. Amen. Believe it or not, I am really encouraged, hallelujah, because I sense the Spirit of God. I don't know, maybe I just sent you guys as prayers, I don't know. But let's go, bones, there's a part of the body, praise God. You want to lay your hands on your neck? Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, glory to God, peace in Jesus' name, glory to God, every bit in the name of Jesus. Every bit in Jesus' name. We speak the peace of God that passes all understanding. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. For Lord, for your glory, but because you love her, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name. I'm really excited about the Lord. So, Hallelujah. I don't know how to feel other than excited right now. So is it any different? I'm not sure. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Is there anything else? I mean, we could go all day. <laughs> we could go all day? <laughs> Have a seat right there. Praise God. I would like some women to just kind of pray over her and minister to her right now, okay? Praise God. Those women who just want to go ahead and just lay her hands on her and just minister to her. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh my gosh, this is fun. Hallelujah. You know, one of my favorite verses, and I'm going to try to learn it by heart because in our men's group, this is a plug for the men's group, we're supposed to come up with a mission statement. And that mission statement is oh, a scripture or something, right? So there's this awesome scripture about Jesus, and it's in the Old Testament. It basically talks about, without running to my notes, it basically says that the Lord that I don't know, have to know, I don't have, let me tell you, I'll interpret it. I don't have to know what to do. I just have to know that he is with me. Praise God. And the Lord says about himself that he is a God who exercises loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness. In other words, he knows what to do. He exercises. Say, God is a doer. God does things. Hallelujah. And he knows what to do. Praise God. My brother, you're going to minister coming up soon, right? Am I right? Do you know when? End of this month. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, so you got a young warrior you're bringing up. You, you do. You have a young warrior you're bringing up in the things of the Lord. How, how old is that young warrior? He said he's 12. Oh, my <laughs> gosh, you're big. Praise God. Stand up, young man. 
What's your name again? Daniel. Daniel. What a great name. Oh, my gosh. Hallelujah. We got a Daniel here as a young man. We got a Samuel here that's a young man. Oh, those are some great names, you guys. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're just going to pray for you, okay? Stretch our hands to Daniel. You, you can just relax. You can take the mic from him. Hallelujah. We bless Daniel in the name of Jesus. The body of Christ reaches out to him and blesses him right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Okay, I got something for you, okay? Some words have gone forward over you, and I'm just going to confirm them, all right? But God is making you. God has a special plan for you. That's why um, words have gone before you that not worry about whether or not maybe you're accepted in um, the groovy people at school or in, you know, among the youth, where whatever things you may be dealing with. Praise God, because God's saying he's making you strong, boned. He's giving you a backbone. You're only 12, but God's building up a strong backbone in you. Praise God, because you're going to need it for the things that the Lord is going to have you um, in charge of. And the Lord says not to be afraid. Praise God, because that's your portion. That's a part set aside just for you. You don't have to measure up. You don't have to make it happen. You just have to say, okay, Lord, I'm going to let you train me. I'm just going to be obedient. Praise God. That's all you got to do. You don't have to sit there and go, I don't know if I can make this happen. I can't be somebody else. You have to be somebody else. You just got to be you and who God has called you to be. Praise God. And you've got a dad who um, is a model for you. Praise God. And he's kind of a wild child himself, this guy. I know a little bit about him. Praise God. So God has an adventure ahead for you. Praise God. Do you like adventure? So do I. Hallelujah. And you'll come out on top. Praise God in this adventure. Hallelujah. That's it. That's it. Praise God. Men like adventure. I'm not saying women don't. I'm not saying women don't, Destiny. But it's a fight sometimes. But it's not where you're going to get destroyed. It's not where you're not going to get the victory. But it is a battle. And that's all part of the fun of adventure. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Is there anybody else that we could pray for? that something's going on or, or physically with you. Um, I just want to obey God. Just want to be obedient. I, I still have a, a sore ankle that I believe in God for and a sore knee, you know. Praise God. But is there anything going on with anybody? I just want to lay hands on somebody. I don't know what it is. I'm just at that point right now. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, Susie, come on up here. Nobody's standing up, so I'm going to have you come up, would you? We're going to lay hands on you in proxy uh, for your husband. Okay? Praise God. Hallelujah. So I need a lady to help me pray. Thank you, Autumn. Hallelujah. I just saw you, and I thought, I immediately thought of your husband. Okay? So go ahead and just put your hands on her back. And we bless in proxy in the name of Jesus. We bless your back in Jesus' name. We stand in the gap for that body. Praise God. That's part of our body. Hallelujah. That's bone of Christ's bone and flesh of his flesh. And we bless his body in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Shape yourself, body, to by whose stripes you were healed in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I just see your husband when I looked at you, okay? So I just thank you for being obedient to the Lord. Hallelujah. Why don't you turn around and look at everybody? Let me tell you about her obedience. This obedient servant, and you, you know the story. I'm not going to do it really well. This obedient servant listened to the voice of the Lord as she was walking and told her to go down a different path. It was in an alley? And in that alley, there was a baby that was thrown away. Actually in a box. Wrapped up in the blanket. Wrapped up in the blanket. 
in a, in, a, in a container, which is not a very nice place, right? Go ahead and put the mic up to your mouth, right? Was it in a, what was it? Yeah. Uh, it was a baby wrapped up in the, in the blanket, in the box, with the bottle, with the diaper. And it was a little dumpster beside a big dumpster. It was a dumpster. And you know how you, ha you hear them baby dolls that cry? That's what I thought it was at first. So I looked in the box, and it was a baby, so I picked the baby up. Well, I picked the whole box up, then picked the baby up, grabbed my cell phone with one hand, called 911, had the uh, firemen and the police come. I stayed there with the baby. They uh, changed the diaper and everything, but they had me do it. And uh, that's good. It was it was a little baby boy. So mm. they took the baby to the hospital, and when they took the baby to the hospital, I gave them my phone number because I wanted to keep in contact mm -hmm. to find out what was they gonna do with the baby, or else I would have adopted it. But somebody, some family, ended up wanting to adopt a baby. Hallelujah. That's obedience. That's obedience that takes revenge on the enemy. When you're obedient to the point of where I think I will walk the way the Lord said to walk. She could have walked her own way. But you see, something's been going on in this spiritual mind that's been listening to his so she could do it because she's been doing it. She's been taking other things captive that don't lift up Jesus. So when she was already used to hearing that direction. You understand what I'm saying? You, it's a pattern of obedience. And suddenly you're led to where God is taking revenge on the enemy. Praise God. And we bless that little baby boy in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are, wherever you are, we bless you in Jesus' name because God said, no, there's a limit. There's a limit here. And it was no to the enemy. And that boy's alive because of obedience. Revenge was taken. Praise God. And it was hot outside. Praise God. Is that awesome? Amen. Thank you so much. That's revenge. There is a whole school year of kids coming to the youth group. And you are not alone in your ministry to the youth group. Who here has helped out with the youth group these last two months? Are you here in this building? Praise God. And some are not here. You are not alone in this thing. And we will help you to take revenge. Hallelujah. Praise God. What happens when the thief is caught? What happens, I'll say, what happens when the thief is caught? It's got to pay back seven times. That's revenge. Let me tell you something, you guys. I believe the devil's on the run. And if we're smart, we're going to take revenge. We're going to say, you are going to pay back what you've stolen. Because I believe the thief has been caught. I believe the limit has been set. And I believe it's payback time. I believe that. It's up to you if you want to believe that or not. But I believe it. What is my testimony? What is my thing? That van was stolen and it was gone for what, a day? Tell you what, there is no youth ministry in my father's house if a van does not pick up kids. There is, it's as important as ministering the word of God to the kids is the van driver. And guess who takes more time with the kids? The van driver. It's more of a cross and more of a benefit. Praise God. But that van was caught. Praise God. I'm just telling you, that's where my faith goes, that the devil's on the run, and I believe that payback is coming. Praise God. So I pray you receive that also. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
communion. Thank you. You want to help me with it? Okay, thanks. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We're going to go ahead and get ready for communion. How are you feeling? Hallelujah. Praise God. Is it much better? Is it a little better? I'm just kind of shaken. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. You know, you've really been an encouragement to me. All right? It's like you two are a power couple or something like that. And that gavel thing is kind of a wild thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you did this gavel thing while they're getting the community. You did this gavel thing. And um, you came up to me and you said to me something like, um, I'll just tell you my interpretation of what you said. It was like um, there was a shout in me and I needed to do it. And then I didn't. At that moment, I didn't shout because I really thought, well, what do I do? Do I just yell? You know what I'm saying? So maybe I should have. All I know is afterwards, I'm in my car and I'm driving and um, something happens to me. And I just get this, and every now and then you'll see it happen to me, so don't make fun of me, but I just get this shake, hits me, and I go, usually I'm praying in tongues, and I go, you know what, I'll shout then. <laughs> so I literally will start shouting, hallelujah, in victory. And because I don't know what to shout, I'll go, Rasandaraba Shandriya Handriya Ko. And this just comes out of me. But I want to thank you for that. Okay. All right. Um, when you were ministering there, oh, I was like, what happened to my voice? <laughs> when, I was, uh, when you were standing there and ministering there, um, I felt that the Lord has given you a vision and a vision to go place. And I see like a, it's a mountain place. Okay, and then it's been in your burden or it's going to be in your, in your vision. And then God, God literally showed me that um, you were or you have this, this area to go that you, are, that you are and your wife are praying for it. And then it's like a Hindu place, you know, where there is like a mountain and there is like a, uh, it's like a, the word, the, 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 the word of sorcery has been declared on the top of the hill. And, I, and as you're speaking, and I just, I just, the Lord says that, Tony, you, to be, go up there and blow up the trumpet. And when you blew up the trumpet, I see this, this the, the magic word that was so, that, that was holding everything back, disappearing it, and I can, I can see the word roar. Hallelujah. Okay, and, the, and then the, on the top of the, the flag, it just, just uh, what you call that? Uh, disappearing it because the, the, the faith and then the courage and the obedience that you took and then you blow up the trumpet and you shout that was like that's why I felt I need to tell you and encourage you that you shouted when you shouted the principalities of the power of that area being so much disappeared that the, the presence of the Lord came in and there was a roaring roaring and the victory of, uh, of the Lord took place in that area so I need you to pray and I, I'm gonna pray for you okay? okay Heavenly Father right now I come to you in the name of Jesus and I speak forth the vision speak forth the mystery understanding and the wisdom to take place in this church in this yes. area into this leadership Father God and especially Pastor Tony right here in the name of you Lord I, I pray Father God the mm. obedience and the power to just so fill in his bone Father God just when mm. he speaks Speak forth, Father God. Not only He's speaking forth to your people, but He declare your princip your power to these principalities mm. of the powers to to crumble down the walls that has been holding back what you have promised to that Hallelujah. generation, to that atmosphere, to that village, and to that area. Right now, we declare, mm. we decree your promise, we decree your victory, yes. we shout to you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. And Hallelujah. every confusion, we destroy you in the name of Lord. In every confusion, you have no power because mighty man of God is being obedient and you are bringing vengeance to the thing Things that has been disobedient for a generation. Hallelujah. Rikara In the name of you, Lord. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. We're going to do something. Let's stand up. Let's stand up. Hallelujah. We're going to shout. We destroy every principality of power. We're God's people. Bone of his bone, we're flesh of 
of his flesh. Glory to God. Our limit has been set in this house. Hallelujah. And over this, over Las Vegas, Nevada, in Jesus' name, we receive the vision of this house. We receive our pastor's vision for multiple services. Glory to God. We receive our mission in the name of Jesus. Do we receive the mission that God has for us? Hallelujah. Glory to God. I know this is silly because it's silly to the carnal mind, but it's not to the principalities and powers. The Bible says we make known to them the manifold wisdom of God. So we're going to make known in Jesus' name at my Father's house. Yes. Hallelujah. That the limit's set. Not a bone is broken. Yes. And God has gone up with a shout. Yes. With a shout. With a shout. Hallelujah. When Bishop Hamlin was there, he had a shout. Praise God. We're going to start shouting more in this church. Where's Fritz? We're going to start having a time where they just shout. shout. Yes. Hallelujah. And change the atmosphere. Because I tell you, the devil's on the run. Glory to God. He's on the run. Praise the name of the Lord. You're going to help me with the offering? I mean, with the offering, with the communion? Can we have the mic? This is my bone. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Glory to God. I know. What do I want you to do, right? <laughs> We're going to have people come up and commune with Jesus. That's all. And I'll help you out. Praise God. So just go for it. You want to come up and hold me around? Or? Um. Sure, we can do that. All right. Um, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and come up. Um, we have three areas. You can just line up, and then we're going to take the emblems, and then we're going to do it together. So if everybody can hold on to it to the end, you can uh, pick your emblems and go back to your seat. That'd be fine. If you want to stay up at the altar, that's fine too. Um, but let's go ahead and start doing that. Hallelujah. This is a communion we're having with Jesus. You are listening to a Radionomy station. Radionomy station. Get lots of food, a big, big yard, where we can play football, a big, big house. It's my father's house, a big, big house, with lots and lots of room, a big, big table, with lots and lots of food, a big, big yard, where we can play football. It's my father's house. I had this moment. 